It's going to be fun. <laughs> hey, y'all. This is Liz with Jill's Outdoors with another episode of Gun Gals Live. We've got an awesome show for y'all tonight, but I am going to apologize in advance because I have a bit of a cold. Um, so, yeah, just please excuse that if I don't hit the mute button quick enough. Tonight, we are tackling the subject of less than lethal defense options. Before we begin, let's run through tonight's panel of lovely gun gals. Tonight, we have Miss Armanthea. Hey, y'all. It's Armanthea. Hey, we have Jesse. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apologize, too. I'm on cold medicine and sick. Love you guys. And two out of the four gun girls on cold medicine should be an interesting night. And we have Stacy. Hey. Hello, everybody. And all I want to say is keep your illnesses way over. <laughs> we will try. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for being a part of tonight's episode and for all you do for gun gals. As always, we'd love to have you join us in the chat. To get the hookup, email us at info at gun-gals.com or find the gun gals on Facebook groups. The Gun Gals Facebook group is where our discussions continue through the week, so if you're new to Gun Gals, be sure to join us there, too. Real quick, we want to give a huge shout-out to our amazing patrons over on Patreon. Our Level 1 patrons, Clover Tack, Georgia Trucker 69 Ghost Tactical, Angry Haycutter, TD3 Media, and, of course, our Level 2 Awesome Sauce patron, The Gun Snob. Thank you all so much for supporting Gun Gals. We love y'all. All right, so as some of y'all might remember, October is National Safety Awareness Month. So during this month, we are talking about safety awareness and the like. Uh, this week, we're tackling less than lethal defense options. Now, obviously, this being gun gals, you can probably guess our favorite go-to for self-defense. If you missed last week, we talked all about if you should get a carry, get or carry a gun. So if you missed that, you can go find it on our YouTube channel. But sometimes carrying your firearm is just not an option for various reasons. So let's talk about some other defense options. First, let's run through tonight's panel. Uh, what is one non-lethal defense option that you personally carry or could use on a regular basis? Let's start with Jesse. Um, non-lethal. Number two pencil counts, right? Totally. <laughs> um, I have that, a knife, and as everybody knows, I always carry a throat punch, so, of and course. a pop-pop stick. Okay, cool. so I have more than one, but yeah, those <laughs> are my favorites. Your EDC bag is very large. It really is. <laughs> All right, Arminthia, what about you? Um, let's see, well... I have my knife, my Kershaw knife that I carry. Um, one of my absolute favorites, especially for work, is my clicking ink pen. And then um, I have pepper spray and I have, um, oh my goodness, y'all, I'm drawing a blank. Um, my taser, my goodness. Yes, my taser. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. <laughs> it's all good. And Stacy, what about you? I don't really have, I mean, really anything I, I can use my purse. It's usually pretty lethal. It's pretty heavy. Hey, that works. It does, it works. totally. Uh, we just got a shout out from the gun snob as a knife considered non-lethal. In this instance, we're going to block it in with that, but we'll get to that later. It totally right. depends on where you use it at. Exactly. Okay. And how you in my it. defense, y'all, my <laughs> knife is totally non-lethal. It is used to open mail and <laughs> clean the dirt out from underneath my nails. So it's the most non-lethal knife you've ever seen. Hey, but it'll <laughs> work in a pinch. It totally would. There you go. All right, let's quickly go over the obvious first step with any kind of defense you plan to carry, checking up on your local laws. This should be your very first step, whether you're looking into firearms or non-lethal. Now, keep in mind, we are 100% not lawyers. We are like the opposite of whatever, whatever the opposite of lawyers would be. That is us. And you should always do your own research and ask professionals if you need to. So for non-lethal defense, it can be kind of tricky also because some things you wouldn't necessarily think of by a certain title can fall under titles of illegal to carry items. For example, 
we'll talk about this item a little bit later, but I found some really cool and cute cat shaped keychains that are meant for self defense and they can be worn um, while they're on your keychain, worn like a big ring on your hand. And if you were to get in a not so great situation, it could be used as a type of defense weapon. Now, at the time when I got it, I didn't realize that this cute little keychain was classified in Texas as brass knuckles, which are a huge no-no. So now that I have learned and they are going elsewhere. Um, but yeah, whatever you're looking at getting, definitely check up on its legality first. So ladies, do you know of any items that would seem harmless or at least relatively speaking, um, but that you could get in a lot of trouble for being that they're illegal that you didn't quite maybe think about? Let's start with Stacy. Not really. I, mean, I was looking at it. You can see, like, I don't know if it's just not very specific on the where I was looking at, but um, I know we can't have the, the actual brass knuckles, whether or not that would classify, um, you know, as long as you're not going around carrying daggers and all <laughs> that stuff. But Hey, but that's totally Atlanta, legal so. in Texas right now. They passed a law. I could open carry a sword if I wanted to. <laughs> carry like, like the swords here or the daggers or um, any of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Here. It just kind of goes to show how every like everywhere is different and you kind of got to watch for that stuff. Uh, Arminthia, what about you? Is there anything that you've come across that you were surprised or it didn't it didn't make, you know didn't click at first. Um, other than you coming up with the brass knuckles thing, the little, those things. Um, cause I was thinking, you know, for years, my husband went to gun shows and sold those here in Texas for years. I mean, it was just, and when you come across that this year, I'm like, wow. Like, right. And I don't really know well. if that's a recent thing. Um, when I found the article on it, I, it just kind of came across, it was actually on the Texas Hill Country Facebook page and it came across, um, and then I dug into it. So I don't know if it's a recent change, um, but it does specifically, I guess there was an actual lawsuit, um, done, which made the statute there for it. So yeah, it's like, it's so weird. It's like the most random thing. Uh, Jesse, what about you? Do you have anything that you've come across? Um... Switchblades and butterfly knives. That was the weirdest thing to me because I bought one um, years ago and while well, I was still in Texas. And after I bought it at a gun show, um, one of my friends who happened to be a police officer told me that I wasn't technically allowed to have that and I was like what do you mean I bought it at a gun show and he's like yeah it doesn't mean you're allowed to have it Oops. so it, it stays in my jewelry box because no, no. it's it's pretty it's sapphire well, blue in Texas yeah, you're right. yeah it happens but definitely check up on those local laws because it is super important that you don't want to be in a really sticky situation um, and just have it made worse not a good day all right the next question, is there a particular inst or bleh, I can't talk, cold medicine's kicking in. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so the next question you got to think about, is there a particular instance you're wanting this protection for? Are you wanting something that can be used while running or exercising? Are you needing something for the walk in the parking lot in the evenings after work? Are you wanting something uh, for when you're in strict no-gun zones? All of these instances could require different types of non-lethal defense options. And I guess I was actually correct that it's less than lethal defense options. So thank you. I'm going to try and remember to say it that way because that is the proper way. <laughs> um, you are going to want to decide what is your main reason or instance to need this defense and what best suits that need. A handheld taser may work great going through the parking lot from work, but it may not be allowed in a school zone. A tactical pin may work well for running errands in no gun zones, but may not be well suited for exercise. These are all things to keep in mind. So ladies, what's one instance in your daily life that you need a defensive option? And what are some restraints that may be on that situation so that you can't use other defensive items? Um, let's start this one with Arminthia. Well, um, I'm going to take this one from a different angle because 
Um, because of where I work, um, I'm not allowed to have any kind of um, any kind of weapon per se. Um, the officers they go through training and stuff like that. The officers have uh, gas stuff like that. Um, me as a medical professional in there, I don't have all that. For me, my um, weapon or protection not weapon, but protection of choice is a simple click pin. Um, when I'm walking, um, walk in the run, I'm going to turn my, just a simple, just a simple pin, um, that I'm able to click as I'm walking down the run and, um, I've got my paperwork in one hand, meds, whatever I've got. And, I can hold my hand like this and be clicking my pen and trust me because the way, the way it works for us, we are, if something were to happen to me and typically there's an officer with eyes on me, but, um, we are allowed to go one step higher, um, a force than what is being used on us. Did that make sense? Yeah, Definitely. So and that's a really good solution for that because you can't, you literally can't have anything else. <laughs> I seriously cannot have anything else. So, yes. Very cool. All right, Stacy. Um, what about you? Any instances specifically in your daily life that you feel you need a defensive item? And what would some restraints on that be? Um, I haven't really thought of it. I mean, I, most times, you know, usually I'm home most of the time. I'm, I mean, I live in small towns, so, you know, really don't really think about it living in a smaller area and not being like in bigger towns because, you know, you're usually, for the most part, pretty safe of where you are. Um, I don't have anything, um, per se, like sun gun. Those are the things I would like to get or look into, but... Uh, so it would just be whatever was handy. You know, you can use almost anything as a weapon. So anything that was in my vehicle, it's in my con. There's usually always something the kids are left behind. And when my daughter did softball, I had a bat in my back car forever. And there's usually always something you can use as, as a weapon. So... You know, I'd like to see a video no. of you wielding a bat for self-defense. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> yeah, especially since it's been a really long time since I've even, you know, with the bat. And, you know, I was probably the last time I've ever even tried was, you know, being on my softball team when I was, you know, in school. And I'm not going to say how long ago that was, you know. <laughs> my well, That was only a few years ago. <laughs> Of course, just a couple. So, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, there's always usually something. You know, my oldest, she has, she literally carries these two b big backpacks, one for cheer and one for school, that probably weigh like 50 pounds. And anytime that's in the car, I bet I could do some damage with those bags. Oh, I'm there's sure. always something. Awesome. Jesse, what about you? Um, I'm sorry. Medicine's totally kicking in. What was the question one more time? No, you're fine. Um, an instance in your daily life that you need a defensive option. So a situation that you comp frequently have that you would feel better having a defensive option. And what would some restraints on the situation be? Um, probably grocery shopping. Um, I would feel more comfortable if we had a mag light just because... Technically, I can't have a baseball bat, <laughs> but I could go get a miniature baseball bat. But a mag light would also serve as another purpose. But, you know, if someone tried to attack me from behind as I'm putting one of my kids in the car, I could grab it out of the back pocket. Um, for where I live in Michigan, well, Michigan in general, uh, to have a stun gun or a taser, I'd have to take a class to be able to carry it, which is definitely something I want to do anyway, but right now 
it's not an option. So probably something like a mag light, miniature baseball bat. That'd be awesome just for when I have the kids. Very cool. All right. So you know the law, you know your situation. Now it's time to get down to the different, the thousands of different options. There are literally so many. I highly recommend that the best option for you is to find a store or outlet that carries non-lethal defense products and to see them in person and try them out. Most places have no problem letting you handle and try some of their products. Um, these types of products can be found in a multitude of stores. Most gun ranges or stores um, have a section for these. Uh, many surplus or prepper stores also do. There's also some stores that specialize in these items. Um, last April when we went to the Tulsa Arms Show, I found the Be Safe Girl booth where she specializes in non-lethal defense options for women. And she had like one of everything. And best of all, she let you try every single thing. Um, I do believe there's, I believe it's Damsel in Dis Defense. Or maybe Damsel, in, out. Damsel in Defense. Damsel in Defense. And those yes. are... Um, it's kind of like a Mary Kay thing where there's probably a woman near you selling it. So definitely check that out too. So let's break it down a little bit. One of the most popular non-lethal defense options, especially for women, is a handheld stun gun. There are so many different kinds. Some large that fit in a purse, some as small that they look like a little USB flash drive on your keychain. Um, I've actually bought a stun gun before, actually as a graduation present for my sister before she went to college. That one was a little lipstick case that could attach to your keys. Um, we also currently have five different flashlights that have a stun gun on the end. And of course, I couldn't find a single one, but go figure. Um, those are really great for going in the backyard during night to put up the chickens if I have to scare off some raccoons or, you know, who knows. Um, have any of y'all had or used a stun gun before? Let's go ahead and start with Armenthia because I know you have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do have a stun gun. I actually bought... Um, all of my girls, or I say all of my girls, I have two. I bought my girls stun guns um, when they started driving. And I knew that they would be out without us. Um, these are from Damsel in Defense. It's, it's really small, just a little handheld. Um, it plugs in. It's really cool. Um, on the end here, um, it just pushes out. And it just plugs in and you just charge it. It's pretty cool. Um, I do plan on doing a video on mine anyway. Um, it's got two buttons on the end here. Uh, one's a flashlight. Yeah, I'm just shining y'all there. Um, that way you can use it as a flashlight to like get to your car. You know, if you're needing to see and you just use it to get to your car or whatever. And then if something happens, you've got the other side. Um, it's the button just right next to it. It's right above it. I've I personally don't want to get touched with it, but I definitely have it. I've not had to use it, thank the Lord, um, but I do have it, so. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is um, definitely, it seems more powerful than the ones I have, um, for sure. Now, my husband has actually been tased. He's not been tased by one of these. He's actually been tased by, I love it. I love telling the story, honey. I know. Um, <laughs> by the police department. Um, it was a voluntary. He actually for, um, and you would have to hunt for his video. Uh, but I believe it's on his YouTube somewhere. I'm sure someone can find a link by the end of the show. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll put somebody on that. <laughs> right. I keep trying to get Shane to volunteer to help me try out a couple different stun guns. Um, he's actually been tased with like a legitimate taser too, like Clover has. Um, but his was for military training. So yeah, fun times. I want yes. I want to see that on video. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, I know you don't have one yet, and you kind of want one. But what would the situation um, you think would be best suited for to have that stun gun for you? Does my husband make me mad? Count. <laughs> it depends on how mad he yes. is. Yes. <laughs> yes, it totally it counts. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take much. I'd love to have one because, you know, you know, even when I get my concealed carry and, and and stuff, but there, you know, there's some instance where you can't grab it or, you know, surprise and stuff. 
um, or you just there. You know, any instances you don't have it or home and it's in another room. Um, that would be a neat thing to have close to you um, and stuff. But, you know, to kind of give you the chance to get away to get your gun if you didn't have it next to you. Um, so, yeah, it would be really cool and be a really good, you know, way to keep my husband on line, too. There you go. Um, Arminthia, we just got a question in the chat. How much is the stun gun that you have? Or how much was it when you bought it, I guess? Oh, you know what? Let me look it up because I can look it up real quick. But Do it's it. been a little bit since I bought it. So if you want, we can actually, if you find that, you can stick that link in the chat so everyone can see what one you got. It'd be Absolutely. Cool. I wish I was more prepared with links and stuff. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Uh, Jesse, real quick, while she's looking that up, uh, what situation, because you don't have one, right? A stun gun? Yeah. No. My husband says it's not allowed <laughs> to have or a stun gun. not allowed gun. or like illegal? <laughs> no, I could totally have one here. Gotcha. I just have to take a class for it. Oh, that's um, right. You said that. I'm sorry. Cold medicine. But... <laughs> I, I think it would be hilarious to have one. So that way, you know, one day when my husband's like, we, we lost the spark, I could totally tase him and be like, hey, look, babe, we found it. Um, <laughs> but I think I because I've, <laughs> yeah, we always avoid that section for some reason, but now it's starting to click why. Um, yeah, I don't have one, but maybe one day. <laughs> I will say, um, I've noticed this with the flashlights. I, I can't imagine this being really an issue, um, but I'm going to embarrass my dad if he ever, he's probably not even listening, so it doesn't matter. But my dad on three separate occasions, because he has a flashlight stun gun like ours, and on three separate occasions, he has managed to stun himself by grabbing the wrong end and pushing the button. And he thinks it's the light on <laughs> button because from that angle, that's where the button would be. Um, and it's the stun button. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and it's always like he and I'm like, Dad, if you just don't leave the stun, you know, because it has an on off for the stun part and you can use the flashlight like a normal flashlight, even if the stun part's off. But he leaves it on and he like gets it from the door of the car and grabbed it like a couple different times at camp because we use him at camp every year um, to chase off raccoons and stuff because we can't carry up there. Um, so, yeah, it's just really funny. So don't don't tase yourself by accident but it's you better get it on camera if you do because that's hilarious <laughs> and tag i might gaps. have to get my husband one of them because i guarantee you he'll be in a hurry or rush or something and i guarantee you he would push that button <laughs> probably multiple times so hmm. i'm gonna have to get him one and i'm gonna have to make sure i video every time he uses it that i'm around just I'm in case he does thinking christmas <laughs> I'm thinking so too. They're only, I think the one that we got, um, I'd have to look up. I don't even remember where it was. It was actually a gift for my grandpa. Um, but they're like 50 bucks, I think. So they're not too expensive and they're pretty awesome. But anyway, sorry guys. Um, okay, next most popular non less than lethal defense item for women is probably going to be, and you guys have already shouted it out a few times, um, a defensive spray like pepper spray. I've noticed most of these look pretty much the same. They're all small, easy to carry or conceal containers. Um, kind of like a little travel deodorant is what they kind of remind me of. Um, yeah. I've never used pepper spray before, um, but have any of y'all and in the chat, let us know, have you used it? What's your experience with it? But it, have any of you ladies used it before? Yes. Have you used it on a person? Yes. Now I'm curious. What happened? <laughs> Tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first started driving, <clears throat> I had pepper spray. And one of my friends was um, not being very nice. And I decided that it would be a, you know, a funny way to get back at them, so I sprayed them in the mouth. <gasps> I didn't realize that once you spray it in a car oh. with the windows up, that it's going to smell the whole car. Oh, and no. My friend was mad. 
but I was laughing and choking because I sprayed pepper spray in my car. Um, <laughs> but my friend did not say that word that was said ever again. So, you know, totally worth it. A few minutes of coffin for a lifetime of never having to hear that word. It's it's awesome. That's hilarious. But yeah, apparently if you spray it directly into somebody's mouth, they have a really hard time breathing. Oops. <laughs> and they choke for a while. And no matter how much water they drink, it, it they can still taste it the next day. Oof. That sounds rough. <laughs> um, Stacey, it was hilarious. Uh, your husband saying that he uh, sprayed the dog. I'd like to hear more about that one, too. Do you have anything to add on that one? <laughs> no, I'm kind of new on that. It must have been before me, or I didn't know. Um, yeah, I have to come back with that one because that's, that's curious. <laughs> Yeah, I've never used it. I've never known him to have it. Well, then whose dog was it? <laughs> to explain that and just put little <laughs> tiny comments in there. That's funny. But uh, so must have been when he was with. Oh yeah, I was gonna say must have been when he was with the police department. And so and then he just not put that on there. But ah. yeah, so I. Wasn't with him, I guess. I don't know when he did it, but I mean, I could see that when he was working for, you know, when he was he, when he was a cop because oh, yeah. I'm sure it was very well needed. Oh yeah, um, Georgia Truck actually just said in the chat to give you an idea. My wife has pepper spray because I'm hard to wake up, so she can't have a stun gun. Well, I never thought of that. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't have to listen to the alarm clock going off four times. That is a new idea. I usually, I, 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 I don't remember being with you. Um, I, never mind, I'm old. I forgot. This is terrible. Maybe we shouldn't be condoning using our less than lethal defense on our husbands. But, you know. <laughs> Shh, it's totally okay. It's okay. <laughs> the, only dog I, the, only, the only dog I remember is whenever we were working, but he wasn't with the PD, and I don't think he pepper sprayed it. I mean, I remember that blue healer. That you know. But, <laughs> and the uh, stuff comes know. out of the woodwork. <laughs> it's all good. Arminthia, do you have any um, any experience with pepper spray? Um, outside of work, no. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I've not ever used it. Um, my understanding is that what they use at work is not the same necessarily. Thank goodness. So I can tell you that when they spray it inside the building at work, they turn the ace, they turn the fans off and everything. Oh Lord. Oh yes. When they do, well, they want it to be effective. Oh yeah, yeah. So they turn the fans off and everything. And me, I'm running for a gas mask. Yeah. Because I already know. Because usually there's two doors between me before I get to where even, I mean, even in the, even close to where it's being done. And I'm already like choked up. So, and a lot of the times by the time I get home, I mean, it could have been, you know, three hours ago by the time I get home. I mean, I can pull my hair down and you're still going to smell it on me. Ooh, so fun. And that's, I'm not even there when they actually spray. I'm there afterwards because I have to go in and, and assess them and all afterwards. So I actually have to be up where it was sprayed and stuff. So yeah, it sucks. Trust me. I don't want to get sprayed. And <laughs> so for anyway. real. Yeah. Not fun. However, if I could, and I can't remember the brand of it, but I did look this up before. The brand of uh, spray that they use where I work is actually one that you can find online and you can buy it. Hmm. So, because I did look that up before. Cool. We'll have to check that out. And find the link. Um, 
Okay, so next on the list is defensive keychains. Now there are a lot of different types, um, but just like everything else on this list, it's super important to know your local laws. In Texas, anything that can be worn on the hand, like a ring, is strictly out if it's like connected. Um, but any of the long slender pin-like keychains or the monkey fist are okay to my knowledge. This can also differ by county, town, or community, so check your laws thoroughly before you start carrying. Um, as I said before, I had for a short time a couple keychains, and I'll kind of show them to you. If I can get them here. So this is the one I got in Tulsa. It's a hard plastic, and it's just super pointy. And then this is one that I got because I kind of liked the idea of trying them out. Um, and it's a hard metal one, actually. Weirdly enough, the plastic is sharper, but I think this one would be more oomph to the power. Um, but yeah, so needless to say, those are going to be sent off. And I believe I was going to see if Jesse and Stacy can have those. And maybe they can do a really cool uh, video on this for us. But yeah, so have you all had experience with defensive keychains? Um, let me show you the other one real quick. This is the one that Shane currently carries. Um, I took it off his keychain, so I don't have the keychain on it. But it's a defensive keychain that he has when he has to go without other things. Um, so yeah, what is y'all's experience with these? Whoever wants to go first. I don't really have like experience with this, but my husband showed me this one. Let me turn my camera on. So, uh, Cubaton, I think is what he called it. And so I've never actually shown me, um, and stuff. So I was looking it up. And, I mean, he was showing me stuff that you can do on it. Like, you can pretty much hold it like an ice pick and get, like, pressure points. Um, there's a lot of cool things, if you look it up, that you can do with it um, and stuff. And you just put your keys on it. Um, it gives you leverage on a, a, a you know, person who's you know, on his wrist, his fingers, joints, um, pressure points. I mean, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. So I think I'm going to steal it and put it on my key ring. There you go. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, Arminthia, do you have, I know you kind of said that uh, Clover used to sell them at gun shows, but do you have any other, have you tried them or played with them? Or um, No, I've not actually played with any of those. Um, and I, I mean, other than to pick it up out the box and put it on my hand and say, huh. Okay, and then put it back. Yeah, <laughs> that I'm not. That's pretty, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was weird and odd, and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. I'd come closer to putting my key in between my finger and walking to my car. Right, so. which is very popular. Yes. All right, Arminthia, or not Arminth, I'm sorry, huh? Uh, Hi. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Jesse. Do you have any experience with these? <laughs> oh goodness, cold medicine's kicking in. I think hers did too. I think she fell asleep. <laughs> I was just about to say we might have lost her. <laughs> no, sorry, I was <laughs> trying to. Do. <laughs> she she was talking so. and muted, so. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Repeat it one more time. What was I? What did I miss? Oh, sorry. Um, Repeat the question. <laughs> have you had experience with um, defensive keychains? Uh, do brass knuckles count as keychains? Well, in this instance, we can include that since, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, mine, mine identifies as a belt buckle. Um, <laughs> but I've been told that they can be keychains um mostly keys that's typically what i use that's what i have experience in now i do have i was just thinking actually with the keychains especially but really any of these less than lethal defense options um if you are going to travel don't forget that they're at the bottom of your purse 
I was actually just thinking if I were, if I did have any of these on my keychain, um, we're about to take a road trip to California for Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm pretty sure those are illegal in most of the states on the way there and there. So I'm just, I'm sure thought. in Cal, I'm sure in California, just about everything oh. you could think of is illegal. Dude, in California, I'd be surprised if my kids' poops weren't illegal, to be quite honest. <laughs> they're, they're totally illegal. Didn't you know that's, like, toxic for the air that they breathe? I mean, it's, like, pretty soon, pretty soon it'd be kids that are illegal. Right. Can I do that for my house? Kids oh, are illegal. Lord. I tried. No, oh, goodness. <sighs> Thanks. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, all right, before we dive into everyone's favorite less than lethal defense item, let's go over a couple miscellaneous ones. Um, I've seen actually mentioned in the chat, someone mentioned extendable batons. Those are an option. Um, and for some, they can be really great, easy tool to use. So that's definitely something to look into. Um, another option is a personal alarm or whistle, um, mm -hmm. which is controversial, but some people like them. So check it out. Make your own opinion. Yeah. Not my favorite, but... You can have whatever opinion you want. Um, there's also the option to use your keys or whatever's handy when you feel threatened. Although I recommend that if that's your plan to kind of research how to do it properly. Um, there was a time when it was going around on Facebook that if you held your keys, I can't remember. Like they said, between your first finger and your second finger that you hold it there. But if you do that, you actually can like break a couple bones or something by the way it's sitting. So you're actually supposed to put it between your like the middle finger and the ring finger. Um, so just like do your research and kind of do a little bit of practice if that's kind of your go-to. Um, just know how to do it so that in the moment you're not like, oh crap, I don't know what I'm doing. It's a good, good just kind of general rule for everything. Um, and let's see, there's also the option of using yourself as your own non-lethal defense, by which of course I mean taking self-defense courses like martial arts or kickboxing or something <laughs> thereof. Um, there's tons of different classes out there to take. I personally don't have much experience with this one, um, but I think Arminthia, you actually had to take a course similar to this for your job. So do you want to talk a little about that? Um, I can. <laughs> it's it's not exactly the same, but you do learn several techniques that could definitely come in handy. Um, because I worked at the state hospital, um, we had to learn what they call PMAB, which is prevent prevention and management of aggressive behavior. So we learned we learned certain techniques should somebody come around and wrap their arms around you and around your chest from behind, how to get out of that or at least neutralize it. Um, or say they grab you by your wrist, how to, uh, how to neutralize that or even get out of it. Um, um, say someone grabs your clothes, there's a way for you to, um, to work that loose and get out of that. The same with someone grabbing your hair or say you fell down to the ground, you would get on your back and um, kind of make sure you keep your legs crossed and keep your butt kind of where you're able to move and you have to keep your arms up. And then um, I just saw a known user's uh, comment and it totally caught me off guard. Um, anyway, <laughs> you've got your arms up. <laughs> And you're moving whichever direction they are. So you're kind of in a circle, you know, you're, you're kind of, uh, you're on your back, but you're scooting, you know, whichever way they are. And should they go to lunge towards you, um, you would pull your knees up and you leave your arms up and it kind of makes a table that way you would push them to, you would, they would land on you. You would roll them one way and then you would roll the other way and get up and run away. So, I mean, there are several of those small techniques that I had to do. I had to learn those or at least take that course once a year for the past seven years. So, the, it's little things that you do get to take with you. So, it's not quite the same, but those are definitely things that that could be useful. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely more training, like, with the physical kind of fighting than, or, you know, defense than I have. So that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, so yeah. Um, what are some other miscellaneous defense products or techniques that we haven't really discussed, um, but y'all have kind of heard of? We've kind of talked about some weird ones. Let me share one um, that I have. Um, I actually went to a girl and a gun uh, meeting. Well, meeting. We, we go to the range. We shoot. Um, but we also kind of talk about a couple things each time we go. And the last time I went, um, we talked about flashlights and what a good flashlight to have and something that you should consider as an EDC everyday carry item. And when you get a flashlight, they said, um, and it kind of all just makes sense. It's important to try and get one with a button on the back so it's easy to turn on and off and hold. Um, if you're going to be holding it with your gun, you need to know how to do that properly. If it's nighttime and you need to see, but you also need to have your gun drawn for whatever reason. But it's also important to find one that's beveled on the top like that, because I guarantee if I hit someone in the face with that, I'm probably going to be able to get away because that's going to hurt. It's you can't really tell, but it's it's beveled like this, but then it's actually kind of sharp on the edges. And my stun guns like that also. And then the stun part comes out here. Oop, and then I drop it on myself. Um, but that's just um, one of the miscellaneous type things. Um, I know, Arminthia, you kind of talked about your clicky pin. Um, do you all have any other ones, like any other things that you've thought about that um, you intentionally carry or have thought about using for self-defense that are kind of outside the realm of the normal? Ooh. Okay. So for self-defense, you can go watch a really awesome movie called Miss Congeniality, and it'll teach you all about seeing. If somebody grabs you from behind, you grab their arm, and you hit them in the stomach, then you instep, nose, and groin, and then you sing. It's awesome. I <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there. That movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. And if you can Couldn't do it resist. in costume dirndl, please do. I mean, for I don't that. have that costume. I but want one. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> May have to talk to Tardot. Do may have to do a video. <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, Stacy, do you have any that come to mind? Um, not really. I mean, I have nails, so you know anything you know anything to do with scratching or you know, like Liberty Cat said, you know, get some DNA, um, scratches, um. And anything I have handy, I usually almost always, if I'm walking, um, getting out of the car, in my car, I have, um, there's lots of things I can hit people with and hands. I mean, I would fight, you know, you know, kind of just do whatever I can. I don't really have a lot of things, but, you know, handy, but after, you know, some of these chats that we've had, it made more about okay, what can I put in there that I can do and, you know, change a lot of it and, and stuff. So it's really made me think of, you know, what I could improve upon. Awesome. Very cool. All right. On to the big one. Everyone's been waiting for the knives. <laughs> Most people I know who carry on a regular basis and a lot of people who don't carry even at all, usually have an everyday carry knife, especially in Texas. You can find the most liberal person I know, and she actually carries a pocket knife. And it's hilarious to me, but that's besides the point. Um, if you do not currently have some kind of knife that is regularly available throughout your day to you, and there's no legal reason you can't, I highly recommend it. Be sure again to check your local laws. There are so many little details that could put a knife on an illegal li list. So it's very important to know that you're carrying legally. <clears throat> Excuse me. As for choosing your knife, there's a billion and one articles, guides, books, videos. I'm sure some of the guys in our chat can point out some videos um, to help you pick the right one for you. And I'm not going to lie. I don't really know too much about them. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. But I know it's super important to carry one. So at the very least, find a super cute one and keep it sharp. <laughs> so we're going to run through the panel real quick. Um, I have all of mine actually here to show you guys that I currently carry. So I'll go ahead and start if my camera will work. Hi, guys. All right. Let's see here. The first one is actually on my keychain. So it sits next to Groot here. And it's just a little Kershaw, um, little keychain knife. 
Kershaw. If I don't, I'm not going to play with it too much. I'm on cough medicine. <laughs> but yeah, just a little <laughs> basic Kershaw. Um, the next one I always have in my purse is this one. It's a keepy plastic SWAT team one. Um, I think Shane got this for me like our second Christmas together. And it's still just in the bottom of my purse for when I need it. Um, I've had this one recently. It's a stick it knife. It's an automatic up and down. It also has a window breaker. Um, I've been carrying this. We actually got these to test out for somebody. Um, and we're going to do videos on them soon. I'm not a huge fan of it. Spoiler alert. But we'll talk about that another time. Um, but the, the automatic part I really like. And it's got a lot of safety functions. So if you push the button or it gets pushed and there's something against it, like when it sits in my purse, it's not going to eject. Um, and it'll actually, you're going to have to like reset it to have it eject. So it's kind of cool. Um, I would just like another brand personally. Um, and then I also have one in my car and it's actually specifically like hooked on, I wish I would have brought it in, um, but it's hooked on underneath the like radio panel in my car and it's hooked onto a little strap there so that if like, say the car were to ever roll, it's not going to run away. I can always get it. I can grab it. I can break a window, rip my, um, it's got the window breaker. It's got, Ooh, cold medicine. Sorry. It's got the seatbelt um, cutter. Thank you. That word seatbelt cutter. And then it's actually a really nice knife also. So I have that secured in my car so that I can always find it. Um, but just to show off another knife, cause we have a lot of knives around here. This, if you don't like knives or you haven't found one you like, or you just don't know about them and you want to know where to start, just find a pretty one because there's a lot of them out there. This one has little dragonflies and it's super cute. And then when you open it, it's got more dragonflies. Pretty. So basically That's all awesome. that to say, there is no excuse mm -hmm. not to carry a knife. Now, granted, if you have kids going through your purse or something, you need to be safe with it. You need to be cautious. Um, but there's really no reason you shouldn't carry one. It's just a good thing to have. So who wants to go next with what kind of knives you carry or have or use? Blah, blah, blah. Arminthia, you want to go? Sure. Well, um, most of you know that up until this year, the knife I would carry was pretty much my pairing knife, whatever was in my lunch. Um, so um, this year, um, it was, I want to say, it was after joining Gun Gals um, that my husband went with me because I was like, hey, I want to get a knife, so go with me. Let's go pick one out. Um, we went to Walmart, and um, I ended up getting a Kershaw. I mean, I think I, I think I tried every single one of them that was in in the case. Um, mine, the flip. Uh, Mine, mine still looks brand new. I mean, I honestly don't use mine that much. Um, I know that sounds just really awful, but here at the house, um, I still go to my paring knife or um, scissors. I have scissors all over the place, um, but I do have my knife. So this is still an adjustment for me, getting used to having an actual knife. So awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Um, I did just notice the gun stop just sent a link out in the chat. He says, you can check out this site for a good source on knife laws and it's uh, knifewrites.org. So definitely check that out. That's an awesome resource to have. Cool. Uh, Stacy, do you carry an, a knife regularly or have them in specific spots and what are they? I don't really carry one, um, but that is a good idea. I have, Knives all over the house because <laughs> my, my husband has knives and then he's also got, you know, utility knives and stuff for work uh, is huge on knives. She loves knives. We usually try on like we got her some from the NRA last time we were there, her and my son and our son. Um, She loves knives. And so she usually almost always carries one in her purse. Um. And stuff, but so I usually have tons around. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, going and getting my own and keeping one in my purse. Um, 
and stuff. But other than that, you were talking before about having the seatbelt cutter and and the glass uh, window breaker. Oh, I can't even think of the name of it. Yeah, because when I worked on EMS, we had one. You know, we had all that stuff in the ambulance. Um, and I used to have, you know, on my car before I met my husband. I don't even know where all that stuff went. Probably got lost when I moved out here. Um, but I used to have all that stuff because I had a little first aid kit and had, you know, the seatbelt cutter, the window breaker. Um, you know, I had a face mask for like CPR. I was come up on a wreck. Stuff that I would need. Um, I wouldn't mind having it again because it's, especially, you know, seatbelt cutter, the window breaker, because, you know, just for, you know, if you were in a wreck. Um, so, but yeah, I used to have them. Now that I've, you, you said that, I'm thinking, what in the world happened to them? I have no clue. It must have been lost when I moved and never even really thought about it after that. Absolutely. Yeah, as for knives, I mean, there's tons around. My daughter has tons. I can even go get one of hers um, to use for a while. Yeah, that'd be something to think about to have other stuff, you know, other than just, you know, having a gun on me. You know, yeah, for definitely. places I can't have a gun. Well, and like with the knife, I can't tell you how many times a day it's just really convenient to have it like on my keychain. <laughs> it's just, oh, I need a knife. Oh, hey, look. It's super nice. Um, I just haven't, I just haven't hit that moment yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just so used to having like my scissors. I'm sitting at my desk right here, and I've got three pair of scissors in this cup sitting in front of me. And I know I have a pair on the refrigerator, and I know I have a pair in the knife drawer in the kitchen. I mean, I have scissors everywhere. <laughs> See, I would be the same way. Um, I'm a crocheter, so I have pretty well scissors anywhere that I've ever crocheted. Except I have a husband who likes to steal and hide and break and ruin scissors. Uh, so I've actually had to use my knife to cut my crochet working yarn before. <laughs> because I can't find the scissors. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah that is I've, a good point. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> it happens. Crochet problem. Yes. <laughs> But, uh, Jesse, what about you? I know you carry a couple knives, right? Yes. Um, so I had to go downstairs to get into my bag to actually get them. But the knives that I carry, I'm trying to put my camera on if it'll work with me. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. So, let me see if I can do this. Okay, so in my bag, I have the Kershaw that we got from the USCCA Expo in Fort Worth. I'm so jealous. And then on my multi tool, there is a knife. And I'm a big fan of my Stanley box cutter, but one I really like is my butterfly knife. I like it, but it usually stays my jewelry box, but that's downstairs. So I've, I've always got a knife around me at some point and definitely have scissors. Awesome. Okay. So I have my multi-tool. In fact, my husband stole it to do one of his videos <laughs> um, where he talked about it. It's just a 10 buck one mm -hmm. because I bought him the expensive one a couple of years ago. <laughs> but Has I mean, I have again? mine. Has he lost his? Yeah. Oh, he's lost it and found it a couple of times. <laughs> I, I mean, stopped buying Shane those. I used to buy him a new one every year for Christmas, and so, I bought like yeah. a fifty dollar one. Every year it got lost. <laughs> I want to say he's had his so long, but I want to say I'm. It was like it was less than forty, but it's one of the. You'd have to watch his video, but it's one of the first ones. It's like before they started their whole series and numbering them or something. I mean, it was, it was early on in our marriage. I mean, early on. So Very cool. 
our kids were little bitty. <laughs> I know we have so many. We uh, Every time we move, there seems to be a plethora of them that just kind of turn up. And then by the next time you need it, they're all gone. <laughs> I started buying them the cheapy uh, Ozark Trail ones from Walmart now for Christmas every year. Hey, there you go. It's like there's no reason to spend money. <laughs> well, well, this one, it's a Sheffield. But um, the boys, my son-in-law and my son, both got one this last year. So, I mean, tools are tools. Oh, yeah. So... Very cool. All right. Well, as we start toying down for the evening, let's run through the panel for any last thoughts on tonight's topics. Let's start with Miss Jessie. Um, I have no idea. My cough medicine has fully kicked in. My brain is shutting down. Um, I need whatever you're on. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably on enough that, that you kill a horse. Um, yeah thank you everyone for joining us tonight it was really some interesting topics but yeah my brain is shut down y'all it's all good uh stacy what about you any last thoughts or anything to add uh not too much i mean thanks everybody for watching and you know it's definitely gave given me a lot of thought on you know, what to add to my purse or keep in my car at all times and and stuff. So it's given me a lot of so, stuff that I didn't, you know, wouldn't normally have thought about. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do some stuff, buy some stuff, spend my husband's money, you know, all that. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> I know. All right. And Armenthia, anything to add? Um, just thank you guys for watching or joining us tonight. And if you've not seen them, we have dropped a couple of videos this past week and well, the past couple of days, actually. Um, so go over to our gun gals channel and make sure you check those out. Watch them, like them, leave some comments, things like that. Um, and we have a, is it? I think it's technically the first official video from Stacy as an official gun gal. It, it is. It posted today. Woohoo. So, yes. So be sure to check it out. Well, well, now people are going to go watch it. <laughs> well, that's kind of That's the point. The point. <laughs> We are so excited to have you officially as one of the gun gals. Yes. Um, and yes, we're excited we for your video. I'm excited to see. I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't been able to sit down yet because toddler uh, today. But it is on my to-do list as soon as we close out this. So definitely everyone go check it out. Um, thank you guys, the lovely ladies on the panel tonight, and everyone in the side chat and those watching live and in the future. Real quick, a huge shout out to GunChannels.com. If you haven't yet, check them out. Gun Channels is an online 2A community where we can share and connect with other like-minded members. We stream live there as well as here every Sunday at 9 p.m. Central. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week for this week's episode of Gun Gals Live. Next week, we are going to be talking about how to not be a victim. Um, carrying on our October Safety Month talks. So we would love your input for what content you would like to see for Gun Gals um, for both our live show and the rest of our channel. You can share your ideas or just send us some love at info at gun-gals.com. That is all for now. So everyone have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>